I'm Alex Savage at KTVU Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And of course, during the COVID-19 outbreak, we have seen a rise in telemedicine. Doctors, physicians, uh, health healthcare providers being able to visit with their patients virtually. Joining us now to talk more about this uh, are some of the doctors. Dr. Natasha Shure from the Children's National Hospital Rare Disease Institute in Washington, D.C., along with Monisha Kissling, a genetic counselor at Children's National Hospital. We are also joined today by three-year-old Joshua who lives in the Washington, D.C. area, and uh, Joshua's mom, Janelle Sperry, joining us as well. Janelle, uh, I want to start with you and Joshua to talk about what your experience has been, because uh, Joshua has, has a rare condition, and, and I'll let you explain his condition and, and, and talk about the, the virtual visits that he's been having with his healthcare providers because of the outbreak. Uh, Joshua has a genetic syndrome called cardiofasciocutaneous syndrome. Um, it's uh, the diagnosis has many underlying symptoms that are linked to it. It's very rare. Um, it affects um, around 600 people worldwide. The numbers are always changing. Um, and it's very different for every individual. Um, it can present with uh, seizures. Uh, Joshua has neurologic vomiting. Um, he's globally uh, developmentally delayed. He's immobile and nonverbal. He's very happy. Always mm -hmm. very happy, though. Yeah. Um, he doesn't sleep ever. Um, and he has a, a weakened immune system. So things like the common cold or, or a stomach bug um, can cause him to be hospitalized. So we have to be very, very careful about that. Um, it, it's, it's really different for every individual. How important is it for, for Joshua to be inside? I mean, it's important for all of us, but it's more important for him to be inside as much as he possibly can and, and, and avoid, uh, avoid the risk of infection. Yes, it's extremely important. Um, as I mentioned, you know, something, he, was, he was hospitalized for it because of a stomach bug. A 24-hour bug for you or I, he was hospitalized for a week um, because of it. He has a feeding tube, so nothing by mouth. Um, he gets dehydrated very quickly. So, so COVID-19 is extremely dangerous for him, but because he has so many underlying medical issues and frequent hospitalizations and emergency room visits, um, it's just it's important that he remains inside because the smallest thing sends him to the ER. And the last thing we want is for him to be going to the emergency room or, right. or the doctor's office in the middle of this where he could risk catching it. And, and how have the, the telehealth visits been going for him? Have you been, have you been satisfied that he's, he's getting the, the same level of care uh, virtually? Yes, actually, we, we've, um, we've done telemedicine for quite a while with Dr. Sher because we're uh, three hours with no traffic from her office, and he doesn't do well in the car. So um, it's something we were already doing, but we've been able to expand on that with this pandemic. Um, he has had several issues arise um, in terms of dehydration, um, infection, and they would normally send us straight to, to Children's National, to the ER, or to her office, and she's been able to treat him um, just like we are right now, using this, um, using the computer and using this application, um, and examine him that way and check him that way, and then tell us what to do, call in medications, or tell us what to do at home, just to keep him you know, healthy and to fix the problem so we don't have to risk bringing him into an ER. It sounds like it's, it, it, it's been working out uh, well for, for Joshua and for you guys for, for a while here, and it's more important than ever during this outbreak. Uh, let, me, let me shift over to you, Dr. Shure. Um, let me, let me get, give us the sort of the broad view of, from the hospital's perspective uh, at Children's National. How, how has this transition been during the coronavirus outbreak to, to, to shift uh, I, m most of the visits that you're doing uh, to telemedicine. 
So for almost a year and a half prior to the break, we started piloting school medicine with amazing families like Mrs. Berry, who could really tell us how to make it better and give us feedback. So we were actually prepared mm -hmm. and that helped us tremendously. And within a week or two, we went from a handful of people hospital-wide doing telemedicine to 1,000 providers up and running for telemedicine because we did not want to leave any patients without access to care at Children's Hospital. Was it a steep learning curve for, for some of the healthcare providers to, to try to figure out the best ways to, to treat their patients in a, in a virtual setting? It absolutely is a steep learning curve. We feel very motivated to stay connected to our patients and we've really supported each other across the disciplines and with our leaders. People have been working 24 seven to get each other up and running to answer medical questions and other questions for patients and providers. So, We've been really happy with the efforts and feel very motivated to keep our community safe. Monisha Kissling, you're one of the genetic counselors. And um, so tell me what, what the experience has been like for, from your end of things. And do, do you work directly with Joshua? Yes, I do. I work directly with Dr. Schur. Um, it's been a really wonderful experience. I'm I mean, just seeing how the patients react so positively to our program. I think at first people are hesitant because this is certainly a non-traditional way of practicing medicine. Mm -hmm. But once they realize that telemedicine cuts down on time traveled, um, time missed from work, missed from school, they just realize how much more convenient it is and just how much more comfortable it is for both the providers and for the families. What, what has been the biggest challenge for you in, in doing these virtual visits with, with patients? So, you know, doing the virtual visits, um, you know, the, one of the things I really like about it is that we get to see the patient within the comfort of their own home. Mm -hmm. And that really helps us, um, you know, tailor our, their muscles to climb up and down the stairs. We can see what they're eating for, for breakfast. Um, we can see how they interact with their siblings. And um, those are also valuable to our foundation. Um, and I think, um, you know, lets us um, in the clinic. If possible. So it, it, is there, Dr. Schur, when, when you're doing, um, a virtual house call uh, here. What what are you? How much? I'm curious how much time you're spending. Are uh, these longer visits than they might be in a traditional the traditional hospital setting? Yeah. Uh, you, you spend your time, and what are you looking for in, in, during those visits? So it's actually very similar to an in person visit mm -hmm. in the sense that we're getting a complete history. We're asking about how the patient is feeling. We're asking about medications, allergies, if they feel prepared. Then we're assessing the child, how the child moves, how the child is breathing. If there are more active concerns and we feel things are urgent, certainly we can feel them, bring them in, and we feel safe doing that as well. And we're also getting a sense of their family routines and how we can help them not only with the big medical picture, but in the day-to-day -day lives. So are there therapies that we can advise about? What is their routine like? Is there something that we can do differently to make things easier for them and to see the big picture? So it feels a little bit more interactive and personal than the clinic or hospital visit sometimes. I think both have a very unique and important role, so the combination is wonderful. And, and when you're talking about kids with chronic conditions, it, what, what, what happens if they are, are, are not getting the, 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 this kind of follow-up care through these uh, tele, telemedicine visits? I mean, there, there's, there's quite a bit of risk involved there. So with kids with chronic conditions, 
preventive and multidisciplinary care is really important. So we have some kids who are like Joshua at increased risk for infections or other kids might be at increased risk, risk of seizures. And so we'll work with the other team and come up with a plan to make sure that the medications are adjusted and that we're treating the symptoms before they get worse and before these children have to come into the urgent care or emergency room setting. So it's really about preventive care mm -hmm. and making sure that every day we have plans in place to maximize their potential even during this difficult time. I, I, I'm curious about this because uh, obviously at a time like this when everyone's home and we're all doing things virtually, um, it, the, the, the strength of our internet signal, uh, you know, as we're sort of experiencing this, this virtual call right now, uh, the strength of our internet is, is so crucial right now. And what, what happens if you have patients who, um, who, who lack access to internet don't, and are, are unable to do these virtual visits, especially, you know, when we, we have uh, an outbreak like the one we're experiencing right now? Absolutely. We're doing everything we can to stay connected and we're trying to be as flexible as possible. So I have some patients who can't connect like this. We'll get them through as much as possible using the phone, email, whatever it takes, the secure email service that we have, um, the portals. We'll work on being flexible. We're also being flexible with our time frame. So I have some patients who've had a problem They've literally gotten a neighbor or somebody else to help, and then we've done the visit a little bit later. Our patients with some sort of access during this time. Let, let me go back to uh, Joshua and to uh, Janelle because I I want to I'm curious what th this whole experience has been like for for you and for the family. Um, how much more challenging have, have things been? during this outbreak because um you know everyone has to limit their time outside and and you know everyone is struggling at, at a time like this how how much more challenging has this outbreak been for for you and for joshua <laughs> and for the whole um, family too I, I want to include everybody i because <laughs> it's, it's a it's a team effort i'm sure i think um It is definitely a team effort with him. It is definitely a team effort. Yes. Um, I think some areas are significantly more challenging. You mentioned the internet, and we actually, we live in a very remote area mm -hmm. um, on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere, and we have satellite internet. And I don't know how the connection is on your end, you doing us, and, uh, it freezes, it's very pixelated. Um, so that our our internet has definitely made that more of a challenge. Yeah. Um, Joshua has mentioned a feeding tube, and um, he gets homemade blended boluses. He doesn't eat anything by mouth. Okay. And this has made it very challenging for us to be able to get the ingredients to make his blends, to make his two feeds, um, because we've we've been in the house for a month now. Um, mm. We don't leave for anything. We have everything delivered. Yeah. Um, we, we do not leave our house for anything. Um, and so getting his monthly supplies, his equipment supplies, and, and the things for his blend, stuff like that has been very challenging because a lot of things aren't back ordered because we have to have yeah. everything delivered. Um, and then there are some areas that, you know, are not as challenging because we're used to them. Um, you know, he's, he is at high risk of infection and normal things can make, you know, can have a serious impact. So we already practice, um, you know, certain things, um, just general hygiene things. Anytime we go to a doctor's office, no matter what time of the year it is, we come home and change our clothes and take showers. Mm -hmm. um, we take showers mm -hmm. after work. We take showers after grocery shopping, um, just on a daily basis. So those areas have been much more challenging. It's just been, you know, taking some things for granted, like being able to go into the store and get fresh fruits and vegetables for his blends um, and things like that. His medical supplies that are typically no problems come right to the house every month. And then now there's things that are back order. Um, and so just that kind of, you know, it, it makes it a little scary too. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I would imagine. I mean, there's concern, but for everyone about having you know the right foods, the right the, the right medical supplies, the right uh, the right prescriptions at a time like this. Well, but everything has been knock on wood. Everything has 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 gone well. You you haven't had any issues thus thus far. Um, you know, while folks have been staying at home. Um, we we had. I'm sorry, the question broke up, so I'm I'm gonna. Well, no, but no, I was just yes, saying, no, was, no, no, um, you haven't had any major, some... any major issues. I mean, you've had some concerns about being able to get, you know, certain foods and fresh fruits and stuff, but no, no major medical problems, right? Yeah. Everything's been. been... Um, he had some feet, some. Uh, he had a fever and a pretty nasty infection with an mm. abscess um, a few weeks ago. Okay. He became severely dehydrated because of the antibiotics. But because of telemedicine, Dr. Sher was able to, to fix everything. She was able to say, okay, he has an abscess and this is what's going on. I'm going to call in this prescription. And okay, the antibiotics are making him severely dehydrated. This is what you can do at home to fix that. You can you know, mix this recipe and it, it's almost the same as IV fluids. You can push it through his feeding tube. Now he's hydrated. You don't have to go to the ER. So we have had some major issues, but because of telemedicine, we were able to, to take care of all those without having to leave and still keep him safe. Wow, that's, that's tremendous. I'm glad to hear that, uh, that, you know, that it's taken care of after a scare like that. That's certainly, certainly nerve wracking. Uh, <laughs> I think Joshua is enjoying this, uh, but uh, Dr. Sure, you know, that, that raises an interesting question. What, what, when do you know during one of your telehealth visits that, um, that it's time, time to get somebody, you know, in, in front of a, a doctor or, or a medical professional in person? The parents, like Mrs. Sperry, and the majority of parents are just wonderful, and they know their child, and they really know when the child is okay, still playful, still alert. Of course, they can be a little grumpy, but they're soothed with acetaminophen or other medications and back to normal versus a child who's truly in pain, not relieved, different from their child. And that's the point when they should come in. And Children's National and other hospitals are doing everything possible to have a safe plan for those kids that do need to come in. So we felt really comfortable working way. Uh, and our families have been wonderful about knowing their kids and knowing when to make that call as well. Monisha, have you, um, have you found that the, the families you're dealing with, are, are, are they, um, anyone hesitant at all about this notion of, of visiting with, with you virtually at a time like this? Or have you found that, that most of the families are kind of on board and understand that this is the way, the way it really has to be at a time like this? Yeah. No, there, there definitely has been some hesitation, but I think, um, I think because we're in sort of a difficult time and it's, uh, you know, people have more of a feeling of, of desperation, feeling like, oh, I, I don't want to lose access to my healthcare providers and this is my only option. I think they're more willing to go forward, but then once they experience it, then they realize, wow, this is really easy and there's really not a lot um, missed out on, um, on this telemedicine visit versus an in-person visit. So, um, you know, yeah, I think there was that initial um, kind of unease with it, especially being virtual and all of that and, our, you know, our platform form is secure and so we reassure patients of that and um, you know we take all measures to make sure that uh, you know security is is properly managed and handled the same way that it would be as in person and are the video yeah, and the, that raises an interesting question I, are, are the are the virtual visits what what is the platform that you're using is it a, is it, it's a, an in-house system that that you have um, so we are using Zoom, but it is a specialized healthcare platform, which allows um, a, a virtual waiting room. So every patient placed in a waiting room, mm -hmm. and the provider has to admit them into the waiting room. 
So there is no concern about a, a, a random person joining a meeting without uh, given authorized access. So um, you know, it, this is different than, uh, than a, maybe another uh, company using Zoom. This is a specialized for uh, healthcare in particular. Yeah, and, and strong security settings, I, I imagine, um, for, for those visits. Um, Dr. Shore, as, as we sort of begin to wrap up here, and you look toward the future, which we, we all hope is going to be looking brighter here uh, at, at some point soon, but, but even when, once we come out on the other end of, of this pandemic here, um, do, do, you, do you think that, that we are going to be doing more of these telehealth visits even even after the coronavirus has has passed i absolutely think that telemedicine is here to stay because even before this happened we had asked our families repeatedly for feedback and they were giving us such positive feedback about the flexibility of the visit the security of knowing that they could still come in if they felt that that was necessary or we deemed it appropriate. The idea that we're seeing their routine, their homes, it's a little more comfortable. We're seeing the children play in their natural setting. There's less stress in terms of transportation. Mm -hmm. It's not something that should be used in isolation and hopefully with time Time, it will be used when it's optimal for every single child and family on a case-by-case -case basis. So my hope is that it won't replace the traditional model of a supplement and choice for families in the future. That's it. It's all about providing uh, flexibility. It's sort of it, telehealth became a necessity, it seems like, during a time like this, um, just in order to keep patients like Joshua safe. Um, but but in the future, it's going to be it's I'm going to provide so some sorry, the connection for families. Could you repeat that? I'm so sorry. Oh no, I was just, I was just saying obviously that, that you know these these telehealth visits are at a time like this have become a necessity. But but as you say, in the future they can they can be just something that allows more flexibility for families, whether it's you know they have to travel long distances for visits or, or whatever. Yes, and I'm so sorry with the connection. I think that's, you said that they okay, it's, were. Um, The kids Sorry. decorating their, their Christmas tree, bringing it out a second time. There are so many moments where my patients have inspired me and with their creativity. Yeah. We brought happiness even in these times. And so we hope that we can continue seeing that now and in the future. And this process has brought me closer to my team and my patients. That's really wonderful to hear. It's really been nice uh, chatting with all of you. And uh, uh, Joshua, is there anything else you'd like to add? We should give him the final word. <laughs> Janelle, have, do you think he has enjoyed this experience? Yes, okay. he has. Um, Good. He's I'm really, I'm really glad to hear that, and I'm um, glad to hear. Sorry, go ahead. I have to be honest. He's watching yeah. Tom and Jerry in the background. <laughs> um, he, 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 um, he doesn't tolerate the TV or or a laptop. So we actually placed the laptop in front of the TV so that way we can talk to you and he can see Tom and Jerry over your head. Um, so that's why he's laughing um, constantly, is because his favorite. <laughs> See here, I thought he was. I thought he was just Sorry. entertained by all of us. No, no, no. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. it. Well, it's been so nice visiting you guys and meeting you guys. And I, you know, I, w I wish you all the best. Okay, please uh, stay safe, stay healthy, all of you. And uh, it's been really nice visiting with you. And um, you know, we'll we'll wrap up the conversation now, so you can get on with more uh, more Tom and Jerry. That sounds that sounds like a good plan. Uh, well, Janelle Sperry and uh, Joshua, three-year-old Joshua, 
And uh, I also want to thank Dr. Natasha Shore from the Children's National Hospital uh, Rare Disease Institute, as well as uh, Monisha Kissling, who's a genetic counselor at the hospital as well. I really appreciate the conversation, very enlightening. Uh, and uh, as we talked about here, telemedicine, it is, it is happening now more than ever during this outbreak, and uh, in all likelihood, it is, it is the future as well. Uh, appreciate the insight from all of you. You guys all be safe and be well. And uh, if you want to learn more, we have more at our website, coronavirusnow.com. Take care, everyone. Thank you.